Okay, I've got Mike back here and we are gonna follow up on what we talked about last week with um, low appraisals causing sales to go through and um, kind of how that affects the buying and selling process in general, um, which got me to think in my narcissistic mm -hmm. way. But what would you tell me to do? So I'm married, we own a home uh, in Bluffton, mm -hmm. and it's in a good neighborhood that like is reaping the same benefits mm -hmm. as the rest of the market. Mm -hmm. um, but would I be able to get a new home? Like what, what would you tell me to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, would you be able to get a new home? That's a good question. And what would you be trading up to is another good question. <clears throat> you know, um, in past, we've talked about CMAs. You know, if you're selling your home, um, we like to do a CMA to find out what your property is worth. Um, if you're a buying a home, you need to do a CMA because you certainly don't want to be overpaying for a house when you go to buy a new property. So the first thing that I would talk to you about would be, what can you afford? What does your budget allow you to, to move up to? And if your budget allows you to move up to more, then we'd start to investigate how much could you afford and where would you be moving to, right? So that's the first thing we'd talk about. Can you afford to make the move? Yeah. The second thing that we'd want to talk about is how much equity you have in your house. Um, uh, you know, as you said, there's two sides to every co coin. Well, as a seller, um, you want to reap the benefits of this market. And like most sellers today, um, you're not going to be tied up with a contract that could fall through because of a low appraisal. <clears throat> so you're going to look for a buyer who is either very, uh, who is either going to pay cash or has enough cash to make up the difference between a low appraisal and the contract price. Likewise, when you go to buy, you, you shouldn't be surprised if the same seller, if that seller is not expecting the same thing from you. Um, and in which case you would need to be prepared to do that. Um, if, for example, you're uh, going to put down 20% on a home, um, do you have an additional 10 or $15,000 should the property under appraise? You know. Pay, pay Paul with my computer. Right, whatever. right. <laughs> yeah. the, Take okay. it. Yeah. So, it's super, super interesting when you think about it like that. Yeah. Um, from a buyer's perspective and a seller's perspective as someone who really though what going back a little bit mm -hmm. what would it come down to to make sure that I had a home for my family to move into again that's a that's a challenge <clears throat> in today's market because sellers don't really want contingent offers and in order for you to buy their home you have to write a contingent contract <clears throat> Fortunately, I think that the market is shifting a little bit. And um, while the Bluffton market still, there's still a lot of demand, I think that's coming back a little bit where the sellers won't be able to be in such, um, such a demanding position. But right now, <laughs> they're used to it and they can do that. But yeah, you're right, uh, Hope. Um, you would have to be sure that you have your uh, property at least under contract. So again, if we were working together and you were selling your home, the first thing we would want is a really solid offer on your house. Um, we would want to know that that person has is either paying cash or has completely been underwritten by a, lend, a lender so that we know that their deal is not going to fall apart. And then we take that and present it to a seller and say, look, yes, we do have to sell our home, but we've already accomplished these steps. And we've got a great offer, we've got a great buyer, and we've got a lot of earnest money deposit. Mm -hmm. All right? So, uh, yeah, that raises another question, right? Yeah, sounds <laughs> Right. Because when you write that offer on that other property, you want to convince the seller you're going to deliver. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for answering your questions about my situation. If you have questions about yours, you can call Mike, 843-837-7773. Thanks, right. Hope. Yeah. We'll see you soon. All right. Thank you.